Hi, welcome to this die designer video tutorial. Uh, for this video, we will look at nitrogen gas springs. So if you go up to the components menu, scroll down to nitrogen gas springs or NI from the command line, and that will bring up the uh, nitrogen spring uh, dialog box. So just to run you through that a little bit, um, First of all, a couple, couple few different vendors, uh, Dadco, Heisen, and Misumi. Uh, the styles, so in this case, we got the Heisens, we got the, the mini yellows, red, blue, green. Uh, the T3, which is kind of a favorite for my, they're versatile, they're relatively compact and have a good high pressure. Uh, so yeah, once you select your vendor and your, your style, uh, then you'll be listed f for that particular vendor and style, all their different cylinder diameters, um, and based on that, uh, you'll have the different stroke lengths, and uh, then your views, plan view, x-ray view, profile view, uh, plan view. Now you could also click with the add the socket head cap screws if you're going to be uh, bolting those down. Also, if you notice over here in the data section, uh, based on the cylinder you selected, it's telling you your rod diameter, your free length, uh, converted to inches, uh, the stroke converted to inches. Naturally, you have your millimeter stroke up here, but then that converted to inch, uh, your cylinder diameter. Uh, catalog number, and then your force on contact in pounds. So yeah, also a help file. So click that and, you know, gives you description, uh, the command line, the menu location, intelligence, you know, for the bill of materials, for object transforming, and then of course the uh, touch command so you can reactivate and put uh, more of these plan views of these gas springs in just by uh, clicking a predetermined mouse button and yeah it bypasses the command line it bypasses the dialog box so I use this touch command a lot for these intelligent components also uh, video demonstration so you click this and it'll bring up this this video to watch so yeah going back back to this uh, now we will we will put these T3 Hisons in and I am going to go up to the 24.9 I am going to start out with eh, let's just say 19 millimeters of stroke length which is a 750 actually that's probably more than I'm going to need that 750 let's say 15 uh, millimeter stroke length and I am going to start, I usually start this in the plan view uh, because based on the plan view, uh, you know, that'll determine if I have to adjust the stroke length before I put the intelligent plan view components in. So you can see the little little dot there, that's your insertion point, and that'll be your direction to the top. So, um, so yeah, let's get started. Click OK. I'm going to zoom over to this profile view, and in this case, I'm going to just pick outside this profile view, uh, the direction, and it draws it in in the free length, uncompressed. So uh, now to get it into position, I'm going to go off point, so it's going to touch the back side of this stripper face, and I'll make it parallel with these springs. Whoops, excuse me off point perpendicular or parallel to the uh, to those springs so you can see it's been put in now now we have to have some compression this is side views shown in the compressed view so um, I don't have uh, anything showing what the timing of my stripper is but let's just say it's a quarter inch 0.250 move it up to 50 now what I usually like to do for cleanup on this side view, snap to the end point, move it, trim it, and then I like to change this uh, to a phantom. That way you know where you're, you were originally uh, prior to that. A little more cleanup, 
Um, let's say... You know what? Hold on a second. A little bit of cleanup here. Um, yeah, we can, um, we can, um, put a, uh, little larger counterbore in the die shoe. Depict that in the side view. And clean that up a little bit too. And you don't have to if you don't want to, but you usually, you know, uh, yeah, that way you, if if you got the same size hole, a twenty-five millimeter hole, uh, a little bigger in uh, in the spot face for the uh, die shoe. So yeah, so based on the lengths and and sizes, I think that's that's a good um, good starting point. So, and I. Let's go to our plan view. Uh, we will not add the socket head cap screws. We'll just show the thread. In this case, there's only one center thread for this diameter. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to do a... Well, let me show you the touch command first. So I can put the cursor over this, click the designated mouse button, and it puts another one of those components in. Okay? So, the, yeah, they, like I said, it bypasses the... Um, the command line in the um, dialog box. But for this case, I'm going to just do a search and replace. Say say I put springs in, send it out for review. The customer says, yeah, but let's put nitrogens in in place, Mike. So I'm going to replace these four on the lower side of this die. So I'm going to go SR for search and replace. Pick the base point, the center point, and select this whole group of springs and the unified and and whatnot. Well, what did I do? Sometimes when I have to think instead of doing it automatically. Select entities. And now select all the ones all the instances I want to replace. And it pops those guys in. Now to show you a little more intelligence, our last balloon number was 108. I will use the touch command to start the balloon. Uh, that would be the split leader balloons, or LB, but I can use the touch command, and it will be 109. Snap to the center. And pop your balloon in. Now it's prompted me to uh, select the object to link. And done. Um, now you'll notice uh, that when I run the Bill of Materials program. So detail 109, there's four of them shown. So BM from the command line. And yeah, there's your 109, your Heisen for required purchase with the catalog number. So, so kind of cool. Um, if this was, say we were detailing this out, and I'm not going to do this completely and break the stripper and the stripper face and the backups up, but just for instance, um, what they transform to, it's a 980 diameter, that 24.9 diameter, uh, millimeter diameter uh, uh, gas spring, object transform, let's transform all four of those. <clears throat> they would transform into a drilled hole. I can now run the hole data command. I will use the select option, and I'm just going to select these uh, drilled holes, label some, and yeah, one inch drilled through. Um, kind of cool. If um, just for instance, just for instance, let's say it was this spot faced hole in the uh, in the punch shoe. That depth is 4242 and it was a little oversized so SP for spot face that would be up in hole types. Where is it here? Uh, da, 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 da. Spot face hole SP. Um, it's not from the far side 
So we're going to insert it to the center and 1.0625 diameter and that 0.242 I can't remember if it was 4-2 or 2-4, so I'll just put it in like that. So yeah, it transformed into a drilled hole um, slightly over the size of that, but we wanted a bigger spot-faced hole, not a drilled through hole. So if this was, if I was uh, detailing out this punch shoe, I would just draw that in based on, on these parameters on the side view. I hope you're following this, because... Uh, uh, if you do ever have a question about this, give me a call and, and I'd be more than happy to uh, walk you through it. But, but then we'll use that search and replace, SR. Yeah, and now if I run the whole data command, select, and we'll just select those four spot-faced holes. And yeah, you can see it's the... Uh, one and a sixteenth uh, spot face diameter by two forty two deep. So, so yeah, cool. I, I I think it's cool, anyways. I hope you do too. And um, thanks for watching this video.